DBS, UOB and OCBC are on a roll. The trio of Singapore banks started the calendar year with strong earnings, boosted by high interest rates. This comes on the back of a record-breaking year for bank profits. But will this continue? I think the record-breaking profits will still continue at least until the end of the year. The reason is because if we look at the driver for the growth of the three local banks, it has been due to the rise in the net interest income. And that is of course linked to the interest rate hikes in the US. And considering that the interest rate in the US is about 5 to 5.25% 5 .5%, uh, this year, compared to last year, it was below 5 most of the time. So that means that this year's uh, interest would likely be higher than last year. And that would persist for the rest of the year. But analysts warn of higher funding and credit costs to come. A bit more upside is possible, right? And, and that is mainly driven by our view, our house view, that interest rates uh, in the United States might still go up a bit, right? So if, if, if our uh, central assumption holds, that will support margins for the Singaporean banks. But the, the pace of increases has certainly, uh, has certainly peaked. So we're not going to see the same magnitude of improvements as we've seen before. Credit costs will likely go up a bit. We're not going to see much credit growth uh, because rates are pretty high. Borrowers are not taking credit. So against that backdrop, we're going to see overall, I guess, stability in, in, in key, uh, key credit metrics for the Singaporean banks. Maybe a bit of upside for uh, net interest margins, but not to the, uh, not to the stellar improvements uh, we've seen uh, previously. Quarterly profits, this may have peaked or are close to peaking. And the reason for this is for as, as margin expansion that subsides. The asset repricing that's been driving these higher margins, most of them have been completed by now. And what you're seeing or expect to see is a, the impact of higher funding costs to come, which will impact that expansion going forward. So I think we can expect um, earnings to just taper off or slow down in the growth. The prospect of recession is seen as a key risk, with the slowing global economy continuing to weigh on loan growth. Another potential risk? The exposure of the three banks to regional economies and the commercial real estate sector. So we're watching this space closely in the United States and parts of Europe. Uh, in, in Asia, so far, we, we haven't seen uh, significant uh, cracks, but, but again, this is a sector that is uh, highly cyclical and uh, uh, Singaporean banks have very large exposures there. So we're watching that closely. Key risk on a macro level is really slowing growth. Um, Singapore is quite an open economy, but in saying that the Singapore banks are also very exposed to regional economies. So it's mostly the impact on intra ASEAN flows. If that slows down materially, I think you can see it. You can expect this slowdown in Singapore banks as well. The uncertain global economic landscape has increased risk aversion among investors. This has resulted in lower wealth management fees for the banks. High net worth clients have resisted deploying their funds and risk sentiments are expected to remain high. Investor sentiment has not really improved in 2023 and we have seen that impact the bank's uh, wealth management revenue. It has been uh, not growing as fast as the, the interest book. So I would think that uh, if the bear market continue into 2024, we might not see the investors uh, pouring in their investment into the banks and that could also drag the bank's earnings. Clients are kind of hold, sit, sitting in cash, this is what we're seeing. And, and if they're sitting in cash, banks don't really make a lot of money out of it. But despite these headwinds, the three banks are likely to remain resilient and well positioned to withstand tougher economic conditions. The robustness in terms of the diversification of their business for these three banks will help them weather a lot of all these issues, uh, including recessions. And this is not the first recession the banks have gone through. Right? They've gone through many, many recessions and they came out stronger. The banks have very, very strong balance sheets, right? And, and very sound funding and liquidity, which is also equally important. So against the challenging macro conditions, both in Singapore and regionally, again, the banks, Singaporean banks have very good capital. They have very good credit reserves. 
funding and liquidity is, is really good. So uh, the buffers to withstand choppy markets and, 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 and adverse market conditions. Among the three banks, the analysts we spoke to believe OCBC may be best positioned to ride out the headwinds. We are most positive on OCBC going forward. They have a very strong wealth franchise, especially with their Bank of Singapore. Um, if you look at the net new money inflows, this has also been strongest at OCBC versus the peers in the first quarter. Net interest margins wise, these have also increased by a larger amount versus the other two. We think they are very well placed to just um, benefit from that deployment of wealth to come. And this in turn will moderate out any weakness, whether in from coming from asset quality or weakness in interest income to come. What we're seeing, interestingly, is that OCBC has the biggest capital buffer, right? They're running at 16% common equity tier one ratio, 16%. Uh, DBS and, and, and UOB are running at around uh, 14%. So uh, certainly capital is the ultimate buffer, if you will, that protects the bank. And, and on that front, OCBC is definitely stronger. While investors can continue to count on stable dividends, those who are planning to add to their portfolios must also bear in mind that the banks are trading at a premium. I expect the dividends to be good this year, if not better than last year, right? at, at least the same, right? at least the same as last year or even better. These three banks, they are currently slightly uh, overvalued in my opinion. If they are down 15% from the current share prices around that region, I would think that they will make a very good buy.